住落嚟嘅環節會以英語進行。This section will be conducted in English. May I now invite Mr. James Thompson, Head of Digital of Gammon Construction, to share with us back to the basics with BIM. James, please. Thank you. Um, well, it's uh, it's a hard uh, hard act to follow after uh, the presentations from the previous speakers. Uh, and unfortunately, this presentation is in English because my uh, Cantonese isn't so isn't the best. Um, so, what really what I wanted to do today was talk about uh, take more of a strategic view and take a step back out of the detail and the technology and really focus on why are we doing this? What's the value that's there? And what do we need to do with our people, our technology, and our processes to make BIM efficient and viable, really, as a market solution in construction? And I think one of the big things we need to look at is how our value chain is changing, actually. So this is a report from McKinsey. And you can see that general contracting, so Gammon is a general contractor, uh, 20 to 25% of our value within our industry will move into off-site construction, so modern methods of construction. So we need to change the way that we operate. And actually, we have an internal incubator uh, which in, in, uh, works with innovative companies from around the, uh, around the globe. Um, working on software and developing those partnerships, really. So we're focusing on those, those growth areas. The second part is around the way we work. So today, every single project works pretty much in a silo. So we procure things from, for specific projects. We procure different things for different projects. Um, and it's quite inefficient. So we need to move to more of this platform DFMA approach. So if we've got the same products on, the same, on different projects, Procuring them at the same time and standardizing really is critical. So how do we address those really challenging external factors? And we've got four key ambitions, which, which we call our digital ambitions. And really what we want to do is we want to move to become more of an agile and lean construction business, so remove the waste, uh, but also give some of that value back to our clients. We want to be safer, have better quality, better sustainability, productivity. But a major part for us is there's only a finite number of talent in the BIM industry. And essentially what we want to do is we want to attract the best talent and retain that talent within our organization. So we have three pillars of digitalization in Gammon, uh, which are really focused around the people, the process, and the technologies. The first one is around a modernized core. And what do we mean by that? Essentially, all of the back office uh, initiatives or back office uh, functions need to be digitalized. So we can't build this really fancy digital platform on the top of bad foundations. We need to, to change the way that we do it. Accelerating through digital really is what picks up BIM, and that's where we're really focused on that platform approach. And then the third one, scaling new business, is looking, we can't do everything ourselves, so we need to work with industry partners to accelerate our digitalization and also give the right products to the right people in order to be able to deliver the correct data. So in Hong Kong, there's three main pieces of legislation that's around uh, what we do day to day. Uh, one being the technical work circular, one being the DWSS, and then really the third one is focused on the asset information. And they tend to be our, our major digital requirements, which are a minimum uh, entry. So there's 20 BIM users uh, for the contractor. Um, in the DWSS, it's mandatory on, on all major projects, and we're seeing it in, in the private sector as well. And then for the asset information, there's a minimum number of requirements. But to give you an idea, on one of our major airport projects, we've got over 500 million assets that we need to populate. So we have to change the way that we work. So if we focus on the BIM users, what does that actually look like in principle? So those BIM users 
can be addressed with a piece of technology. So today we've seen a lot of the technology that go to deliver those BIM uses. So if you were to deliver all 20 of those BIM uses, essentially you'd end up with significant numbers of, of software, but also significant each piece of software uh, populates different types of data and different outputs. And we can produce great things. So this is, a, this is the airport project we were speaking about previously. And this is a tool called Revisto. This is how we connect uh, different types of BIM information, whether it's IFC, whether it's from Tecla or Revit. We'll bring it in here and essentially we'll assign responsibility to people who might not be BIM people and they'll resolve those issues day to day and we'll be able to track those results on a series of KPIs. But the message really I wanted to get across today was that we can't operate the way that we've always operated. We're dealing with terabytes of data. We're dealing with hundreds of people, thousands of models, tens, sometimes hundreds of thousands of drawings, and lots of different file formats, a lot of which aren't open BIM formats. But it's not a technology problem at the core of it. So this is the Bew Richards wedge from 2008, and this really kick-started BIM in the industry. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't realize that actually um, what we aim for today is level two and level three BIM, but actually the common data environment was part of level one BIM, and sometimes it's something which, which goes, goes amiss in our, in our projects. And it's great to see the CIC are really focusing on that on the CDE standards. So what does a CDE do? So a CDE is a way of managing information on a project. So essentially it's an information exchange process. So the chart on the left is how it works. So everybody works in their individual teams in work in progress. Things are checked, they're shared. A lot of the information which you'll see at a client level and at a consultant level will be shared, and then it's published for a purpose. And those purposes are called suitabilities, essentially. So you can have different suitabilities for different parts of the project. So if it's suitable for procurement, it will be an S status, or if it's suitable for construction, it will be a, uh, in the green box as a P status for published. But the most important box, and the one which regularly gets overlooked, is the archive. And that's essentially the audit trail. So every time you go between a blue box to a yellow box, a yellow box to a green box, that information is archived. And it was great to see Billy had traceability in there, because really that's one of the fundamental components of a CDE. Another common misconception is that CDEs, uh, we need to create these four boxes inside our CDE in order for it to be a CDE. Actually, that's not how it was ever intended to, to work. Actually, we've moved away now from that folder-based construction process into more of a data-driven one. So you can see here uh, that the file name actually populates the metadata that is above it. Um, so we can search for this information and we're not constrained by the folders themselves now. So moving away from BIM and really focusing on why do, how does the CDE empower other people on the projects? This is a, um, a process which we do every day in every single project. And this is how we plan projects, but also how we update progress. So you can see planners, they'll work in P6. A lot of the time, P6 will be saved on a server. Uh, managers don't like P6, so they export it to Excel, and they save another copy. They'll PDF it, send it to an email to an engineer, he'll, or a QS, and they'll say, here's the progress. They'll make their comments, and it'll go back around this circle. Then essentially, when you include the surveyors and the other QSs on site to update that progress, you can see there that things are emailed out. You know, the, the recap model might get upgraded or might get updated after a scan. And then when you add BIM into the mix where you've got 4D planning or you've got a, a BIM 360 copy of the file, where is that single source of truth at that point? And this process happens on a daily basis across multiple projects 
across the industry. So you can see just that one process has four different groups of people, six different types of files, and seven different versions of the truth. And that really is the problem statement for why we need a CDE in the industry. So is there a better way? So what we did was we took a look at ourselves um, and we actually needed to understand how mature we were in BIM in the industry. We're well, one of the largest BIM teams in Hong Kong, uh, but how good are we? So we looked at 12 different areas of BIM, ranging from the BIM users all the way down to how trained are our people, how, what software do we have available, what technology stack do we have there. And then what we did was we developed a series of standards. So these standards are standards which we operate on within the business. And each of these standards have got a workflow or a process. So now whenever we start a project, people work to a standard process, to a standard workflow, and ultimately know, depending on which project they're on, what that process is. And then what we do is we audit where we are. So you can see this is very transparent. This is, this is where we are today. We've got aspirations of being a 3.7 out of 5. And these are the areas which we're going to focus on into 2023 in terms of our BIM maturity. So in a similar vein to uh, Simon and Billy with the automation, what I really wanted to do was focus on automation using the BIM model, but not for a BIM task. So this is an engineering calculation for MEP. It's a static uh, pressure calculation. Uh, and within this calculation, what happens is you can see the process. Somebody would get a drawing. They'd probably open the model. They would work in Excel for a bit. And then those calculations would be completely devoid of that model. Um, what we've managed to do is actually move from a process that takes eight hours down to a process which takes 15 minutes and can be repeatable. So all in all, just in this single project, that's got a 1,200 person hour saving just by using that automation. And you can only do that if you're using BIM, if you've got the engineers in BIM, and then also you've standardized that data. So this is how we do it. So essentially what we do is we use API and we connect those software platforms to our central systems or to our data lake. Uh, and essentially, we similarly to taking a photo on your phone and it going to the iCloud, we've got a similar process here. And what we found is that actually this process isn't the responsibility of a BIM person. It's the responsibility of an information engineer or an information manager. And we've identified that as actually a gap within our organization which we need to populate. So we've got a training path for an information engineer. Um, you can see that it's a bit more digital than just BIM, but they do have probably 50% of the core BIM skills. So having some competencies in 3D modeling, 4D modeling, even some quantum. Uh, but the critical part that we're focused on here is how do we manage the information or the heartbeat of the data around that project? Another lesson learned for us is that we need to train people differently. So we train people to become specialists. And actually what we want is we need people who are deep enough in, in multiple subjects, but have got a general understanding of a lot of things. So we're moving away from building deep specialisms to building lots of general knowledge on different systems or different processes. And that's been a big culture shift for us, uh, but it's something which our younger generations uh, grow up being like. So it's something we've got to adapt to as an organization. The next thing is, it's very difficult because the industry is changing so fast. Software changes every year. Things are, you know, the different types of data you can get are, are continuously changing and maturing. So we, need to, we needed to move away from um, qualification-based training through to competency-based training. 
So essentially what we do is we work with individuals um, and the CIC actually to uh, make sure that our employees have got the correct competencies to undertake different parts and different skills within the organization. So I think that's the boring bit out of the way. Uh, now we'll, we'll go on to something which is a, a little bit more sexy. Um, where are we taking, now we've standardized and now we've, we've started to build those core people competencies within the, build, within the industry. Where do we go with it? And really where we go with it is moving towards a platform. So this will regularly be called Digital Twin. It will regularly include Open BIM. It has connectivity to smart cities. And it, all we're doing here is aggregating different types of data together in order to generate insights and streamline our construction process, essentially. We appreciate that all the data is sensitive and some data we, we need to use and other data the clients or the consultants may need to operate. So we have this two-tiered approach to our digital twin. The second part then is we're collecting data from multiple pieces of software, more than 100 pieces of software, and we're collecting it in different places. We need a way of gathering it and structuring it in a way that, that gives us insight. And I'm just going to show you one example of where we've taken different types of data but used a common coding approach to actually generate a, an insight. So this is actually a digital twin of concrete pouring. So on the bottom where the taskbar is moving is actually using Primavera P6 data. The, where the cursor is now is actually taking the concrete strength data that, as it's designed inside the BIM model, and that's using IFC. You can see it's got mapping data from GIS there, so we can track the delivery to the site. The sensor data on the right-hand side is actually the concrete strength of that uh, floor plate uh, of that pour. The drawing is then referenced to that indiv individual floor plate. And then actually what we can do is we can input data into it as well to show that this has been poured, it's been signed off, it's been approved. And the beauty of this is that all of this data is relational. So we can click on a module, it will tell us the sensor data, the program information, and the drawing data, and even the approvals. And that's why we're doing it. We're trying to get that accountability, that thread of information from start to finish. So that's really where we're taking um, our data and digital journey within Gammon, is to collect the information, try and make it as simple for our users as possible, but ultimately make BIM not a BIM person's job. BIM is there as a, a data set to empower everybody on the construction process. And it's everybody's responsibility to make sure that that information is accurate. Thank you. Thank you, James, for your presentation.